Hi folks, Martin here, and I'm back with another board game tutorial for your print and play games. And in today's video, we're going to be making print and play standees for your board games. Now, before we dive into the materials that we're going to need for today's project, let's talk a little bit about what standees are and why you might want to make them. So sometimes you're going to find yourself potentially making a print and play game that's not just cards, that it actually has a board and you need to keep track of your player position on the board. So if you're making a game like that, um, the kind of most basic thing that you can use as a player pawn are exactly these things, player pawns, right? And if you've ever played a, um, you know, kind of traditional uh, game, then these are very familiar to you. They do the purpose. They serve the purpose of keeping track of where you are on the board. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, but they're, you know, they're pretty utilitarian. They're pretty basic. They don't have much thematic flavor. So what would I consider to be a step up from player pawns? Well, then there's meeples. So I don't actually recall uh, what game it was that um, first came with meeples. Was it Catan? Was it Carcassonne? <clears throat> Sorry about that. But um, <clears throat> meeples are, I think, a step up from just, you know, plain old player pawns because they look like little people and um, little representations of people. And they have a little bit more personality. They have a little bit more whimsy to them. So I like to keep some meeples handy, um, you know, and I consider these, like I said, a step up from player pawns. But if you want to go even higher up the, um, you know, kind of evolution of player pawns, then you would go to standees, right? So what are standees? Well, they kind of look like these things. And uh, there's a space for a image where you of your character. Um, and, you know, you can put a front and a back image. And then there's a base that keeps it standing up. That's why it's called standees, as it moves around, uh, as you move your character around on your player board. Um, and I'm going to show you how to make and use one of these things as well uh, a little later on in the video, right? So that's a little bit about what standees are and why you might want to make them. Now, let's talk about the materials that we're going to need for today's print and play games project board game standees. So, first of all, we're gonna need the standees themselves. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you two different styles, two different ways to make standees. The first one I've already shown you um, requires these types of cardboard, um, kind of thicker cardboard, um, you know, kind of pieces. And as I said, you place your front on one side, you place your back image on the other side, you have these um, plastic uh, bases, and then you insert the cardboard into the base. I'm not going to do it right now because it's pretty. It, it can be pretty tricky. Um, and then once you've got that, then you can use that to move around. And that's one way to go. Uh, but this costs money. Um, what if you don't want to spend ten dollars on a set of fifty of these fifty cardboard bases and fifty kind of standy um, frameworks here? Well, you can. I'm going to show you a another way. I'm going to show you a different style of making standees that involves vinyl floor tile samples from the Home Depot. So you can walk into pretty much any Home Depot and you'll find if you go to the vinyl floor tile aisle, you will find on the, you know, on the shelves, little holders that say free There's sample tiles, take one. And so sometimes I go in and I take a few. I don't, you know, I don't, I don't abuse it. I just take a few and, you know, as a, the next time I go to Home Depot, I take out a couple more, um, and because I use the I use these to make you know as backing for uh, standees or tiles or those types of things. So I will show you how to work with these. And by the way, these are um, Traffic Master tiles. The particular style is Traffic Master Grip Strip Luxury Vinyl Floor Tile. If you can see that, so um, vinyl floor tiles now. What would you, if you made your standees from these, then what would you, what kind of base would you use? What would you insert them into so that they would actually stand up? I'm glad you asked. So you would use a binder clips. So these are uh, small size binder clips um, that I got from, I think I got these from Amazon. Uh, and I'll put the price below and all that stuff. 
But uh, these I have found are a great um, kind of inexpensive um, makeshift uh, standing base that can serve the purpose. And I will show you how later on in the video. Now, I've been talking a lot about like having a front image and having a back image. Well, what exactly are we going to print these images on? So in this particular case for this build, I will be printing the images to some uh, address labels, sticker labels. And these, as you can see, are Amazon Basics Easy Cover Address Labels. So the idea is we'll print the images to the sticker labels. We will cut the sticker labels down to size, and then we will cut them to the size of the standees, and then we will fix them. And we're not going to need any glue because they're stickers, right? And then the final piece here. Oh, okay, not yet final. There's going to be a lot of cutting involved. So the thing that I'm going to be using to cut, there's, I'm going to be using two cutting implements today, uh, just a regular pair of scissors. This is a Scotch brand titanium scissors, pretty high quality. Um, and for removing certain edges that I'm going to show you later on, I'm going to use a straight edge exacto knife or exacto blade. Um, once again, I'll put a link to uh, this in the uh, comments below. Uh, so we're going to be using scissors and exacto knife, and then finally, we will be rounding some standy corners in today's uh, project. But these things, these tiles, are very thick. You need a heavy-duty corner rounder uh, to be able to round these corners, and I just happen to have a heavy-duty corner rounder right here. This is called the We Are Memory Keepers. Cropodile Corner Chomper. That's a pretty fun and evocative name um, for this heavy duty corner rounder, which I'll show you a little later on how this works. All right, so now we've gone over all of the materials for today's video. Now we are going to get to the step by step procedure on how I make print and play standees for your print and play board game projects. All right, so the first step in our procedure is we are going to print out our standee images. So this is page one over here on the left side. Uh, these are the fronts of the standees. There's 16 of them, and then these are the backs. And I'm gonna go ahead and print them both out. And I'm gonna be printing them out, as I said earlier, to some sticker label paper. And um, to be efficient with my uh, printout, because as you can see, the um, images don't even reach like one half of the sheet of the page. So I'm gonna print out the fronts on this side here and then the backs on this side here, uh, just so that I can get everything on a single page. Let's take a look at our printout here, and it looks pretty good. So now we're going to go ahead and reinsert the um, paper. Okay, now we've got the fronts and the backs printed out onto our uh, sticker label paper. And so the next step is going to be to um, cut these out and then to start uh, affixing them to the backing. So that's what we're gonna show next. Great, so the next step is we're going to be cutting these out. And for that purpose, I'm gonna be using my um, X-Acto knife. And I'm sorry, I failed to mention this in my, um, in my list of materials, but I'm also gonna be using a uh, cork back metal ruler to keep my cuts straight. So we're going to uh, start on this right now. OK, 
Okay, so that was the act of cutting the um, standee images. So now we've got the fronts on this side, the backs on this side, and uh, that sets us up to go to the next step of affixing the stickers to the backing. So that's what we're gonna do next. Okay, so next step is we are now gonna take the stickers and we're going to affix them to the backing or the core of the standee. So let's do the soldier since I seem to find him on top here. So here's the soldier front, here's a soldier back. All those you can see, they're interchangeable in this case. Uh, not all standee images are going to be interchangeable. You're going to have to pay attention to which is front and back, but in this case, uh, either will do. So I'm going to now remove the uh, backing, or rather the uh, paper that's on the back of the sticker. And this one can be tricky, right? This one sometimes requires a little bit of um, finesse here. Okay, that actually came off really well. And I'm gonna line this guy up to the corner here. This procedure is a little bit harder to do with a camera in my way, but let's see if I can't. Okay. And so you'll notice that in this particular case, um, the standee is rectangular with angles up here, but the um, backing is a little bit rounded, has edges that are rounded. So I'm gonna remove the parts of the sticker that are, are sticking out. And once again, to do that, I'm gonna use my um, X-Acto knife. And I'm gonna be careful to follow the outline. of the um, standy edge or corner here. Do the same on the other side. All right, so that looks close enough. And now we're gonna do the same on the other side. Let's take a look here. So we've got the images pretty much okay. Not 100% not centered, but I'm not gonna redo it. I'm okay with that. Um, it's gonna be functional. And then the last piece is we're going to insert it into this standee base, which could There you go. And I actually don't want to insert it all the way because in this case, oh, I want the label of the character, in this case, soldier, to be visible and not inside of the um, inside of the base. So in hindsight, I should have actually made this a little bit longer, but it doesn't matter because now we have a functional soldier standing. I can even bring him down a little bit more. There you go. So that is one soldier standee, and that is one way to do a standee um, with this purchased um, standee set with the plastic bases. Um, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do another one using um, this vinyl floor tile and some binder clips. So that's coming up next. Okay, so I promised you I would show you two different ways to do a standee. The first one I already showed you using this kind of purchased uh, standee set and that I got from Amazon. So now I'm gonna show you how I would use um, vinyl floor tile. So um, here we go. And let's do this with the professor, since I happen to have the professor here, front and back. So once again, we're going to remove the sticker um, liner here to expose the adhesive. I've been lucky so far. All right, we've got the professor. 
and he's on there. Now, normally, if I was doing a whole set of these, I would put more stickers, and then I would uh, take the opportunity to cut them all out. But just for purposes of the demo, I'll cut out the professor on his own now. And for this, I'm going to use some scissors because, quite honestly, this tile, it's, it's flexible, this vinyl tile, but it's pretty thick and pretty substantial, so I can't use an X-Acto knife, straight edge. Um, it's also difficult to try to cut this out, say, with a guillotine cutter or something like that. So uh, I think scissors are going to be my best bet here. All right, there's the professor. One side of the professor, at least. And now we're going to do the other side of the professor. Um, sometimes I exert the effort to remove this... Uh, backing that's on the back of the vinyl floor tile. And um, sometimes that um, takes a while to come away and, you know, could leave a lot of debris. But let's see if I'm actually able to uh, remove it this time. All right. That's not bad. Cool, cool, cool. All right, so now that we've got the sticker away from the uh, back of this one, let's put the reverse side of the professor on. Cool, so now we have a front and a back for the professor. Uh, in this case, it doesn't matter because it's the same uh, front and same image on the back. So now, Let's apl apply the uh, standee base using one of these binder clips. And binder clip goes there. Still showing off my label as I intend. And then I'm going to remove the metal um, handles. And there you go. All right, we still have one more step to do on this vinyl floor tile standee, and that is to round these corners here, this one and this one. Now, as I mentioned earlier, because this is a thicker material, we're not gonna be able to use a, a normal corner rounder, like say the Kadumaru Pro corner rounder. It's, it can fit, but it actually uh, won't go all the way in because it's too thick. To insert. So you're going to need a heavier duty corner rounder. And so the correct tool for this job is this We Are Memory Keepers Crocodile Corner Chomper. Now this uh, corner chomper or corner rounder has two radius options, one fourth inch and one half inch. And I think for this one, um, I'm thinking one half inch, but let's try, let's, yeah, let's actually just go to one half inch. And, um, we're going to go ahead and line it up. There you go. May have to finish it off with a um, with a exacto uh, knife. Okay, let me go ahead and get an exacto knife in there to um, finish off some of the uh, stuff here. So the thing with the um, Corner chomper is that it's great for thick materials, but um, it's not great for like detail work. So sometimes some of the finer details will get left behind. So I have followed it up with my um, X-Acto knife a little bit. Okay. And so that has given us a nice rounded um, top of the standee for the professor. And that makes that standee look a little bit more professional. Well, there you have it. That was my step-by-step -step tutorial of how to make print and play board game standees for your print and play projects. And as a reminder, I showed you two ways of making standees. Um, one, by using this kind of uh, pre-packaged purchase standee kit with the cardboard core or backing and a plastic base. Um, so there you go, that's that. And then I showed you another way of making standees using free sample vinyl floor tiles that I get from the Home Depot and binder clips. So this method is going to be significantly more uh, economical than if you did it this way. Although, you know, a set like this with 50 of those standees is 10 bucks. So it's actually not that bad. But either way, 
you're going to come up with um, some nice standees that are going to add some thematic flavor to your print and play board games. So that's all for now. Until the next time, this has been Martin. Thanks for watching.